Hi, this is Neil Sun Dynasty. Please like, share, and subscribe. Buy some silver and some platinum. Be kind, helpful, and grateful. And uh, you might be lucky enough one day to have some cat's love. They say you can tell uh, the cat's comfort in your home by the way it sleeps. And this way right here, belly exposed. <laughs> Let you know, they're very comfortable in this house. They go in total prone position. They're totally comfortable. But that's not what this is about. This is about how other countries see we Americans and how our American system affects their economies. And this is about the gold price in Australia. Here's a little insight. Gold, which has climbed about 10% since the start of the month. Joining me now is Peter O'Connor, mining and metals analyst at Shaw and Partners. Peter, thanks for your time today. The gold price, what is the main thing that's been causing it to surge so much over the past few weeks? It's actually not just the past few weeks, it's almost the last two months. It, it actually bottomed out on the 26th of September. And coincidentally, the key driver has been the dollar and global monetary policy. What happened on that day? The dollar index, the US dollar index peaked on that day. And that's been the key driver. And what drives that? It's US monetary policy. And we've seen this pivot or this easing back or less hawkish approach from the Federal Reserve. And most recently this week, we heard the chairman talk about that again. So gold's been driven by ultimately monetary policy, which feeds through the interest rates and also to the US dollar. And the US dollar has been the biggest headwind to gold and to commodities over the last three, six, 12 months. And that change on 26th of September but that's what's driven it. So this leg up, it's actually gone a lot further than 10% you just mentioned. So the rally we've had, it's only caught the attention in the last week or so, but it's, it's broken out. So the US dollar price has now broken out of its downtrend, which it started in mid-April this year. And the Australian dollar price, gold price, has also broken out of its downtrend. So we're in important sharding territory. We've got good dollar support, given the dollar's easing back. And on that basis, the gold price will continue to move higher and gold equities are following that. And given they typically run on a multiple to the gold price, that's what we're seeing play out in equities. So equities are up about 35 plus percent from their low in late September. So the gold, so despite people are thinking it's going nowhere, it's actually had a fantastic run over the last two months. Yeah, I was going to ask you, the gold equities have been looking particularly good for the past few weeks and what you expect that run to continue as we go into Christmas. Yeah, look, I do, and gold equities have stood out for not just the last two months, but the last six months as being the cheapest equities in Australia that I cover in the market and resources, and globally, they're also looking cheap as well. And a typical uh, number I'd give you is gold equities locally and globally are trading about half of their fair value. I measure fair value as the a net present value of their future cash flows, the best and most intrinsic way to value. So they're trading half value, and that's the deepest value of any resource stock that I cover. So if you think the lithium names have been the, the standout outperformer, they're trading at a premium to fair value, and they may have some more tailwinds behind them, but gold has been the cheap area of the market. So what gold needed was a tailwind, and that tailwind's come in gold price, which again started back in September. The breakouts have occurred in both those two key charting points of US dollar and Aussie dollar, and gold equities look like what I could term they're coming out of the naughty corner, both from a valuation and share price perspective, and that means they'll typically run higher. And Another overlay is the short interest in gold equities has been incredibly high because they've been going sideways to down. But when that reverses, it typically leads to a quite a sharp rally, which we've seen today, yesterday, and over the last few weeks as well. And Peter, coal, the price is back up again, and we've heard the government is now considering a coal price cap due to that high price around 400 a tonne. Is this level of government intervention necessary? Well, there's two very different parts to that answer. So firstly, coal price, yes, absolutely. It's, it's trade at extraordinary levels and it's off its peaks that we saw in the middle of the year but it's rallied back just recently why there are three factors it's the northern winter started two days ago there's some restocking going on weather's getting colder secondly uh Prices of energy into Europe, particularly gas, have started to rise again. They're about 30% off their low from a month ago, and coal is following that trend. And lastly, uh, La Nina supply uh, out of the southern hemisphere, Australia, Indonesia, South Africa. La Nina's been a big factor in holding back supply. Most recently today, one of the coal companies called Coronado Coal, ticker CRN, they announced they would not meet their targets because of uh, rainfall impacts in just the recent month or so. So those three factors are driving the external price or the export price high. But to your point, domestic coal price is very, very different to the export price. So the prices we're seeing in the export market are close to 400 US dollars per tonne. But locally, the market, which is only about 8% of what we produce, stays locally. The rest of it is exported. That price has always been what we call a cost plus 
price. So it's the cost of production plus a small margin. So to cap that price is quite an odd suggestion to do because effectively they're capping the margin of the producer. And there are only a few major producers exposed at Anglo American, Glencore, Peabody, uh, Bampu, which is formerly the uh, company called Centennial Coal. So it doesn't have a large exposure to the listed companies in Australia, and it's a small part of what we produce. But it's uh, interesting how they will cap that. And if they do, they'll probably take more supply away from that market, which is what they don't need. They need to encourage supply, which means they actually need higher prices to encourage the producers to invest. So short term, a coal price cap, I don't think, will help. It will hinder the development of supply in the near term. It will actually affect the uh, presentation of both uh, supply and price in the medium and longer term. So um, a cap is not the right answer at this time. Now, I know I allowed it to go into the coal market. But I wanted you all to hear about the, the price cap and how it works from uh, <coughs> their perspective. And it's the same as our perspective. Price caps don't work. What, uh, what happened in nickel and then capping the price, it's, not, it's outright theft. It's stealing from the, the poor who finally have a chance to make some money and get it back from whoever it was that has to pay that high price for the nickel that they cut off. You know, it's all a scam. But uh, this is what uh, the initial part of this this video was to show you how the, the dollar and the, the Aussie dollar are affecting the price of gold and uh, the future forecast they have for their commodities and uh, stuff like that. But anyhow, you guys have a nice night and I'll talk to you later.